I think, I think uh... So you want to make that announcement first? Yeah, is that okay? I'll just include it with my little introduction. You know what? Thank God that I'm checking because I think we're on talk. Talk, talk, talk. I like to talk. I talk all the time. Okay. Yeah, I almost thought we were on reverb. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, that would be interesting. Wah, 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 wah. So, somebody <laughs> complain to us. <laughs> you don't know who you're messing with. Oh, fuck, man. So, dude, every <laughs> time. <laughs> man, it's okay. It's cool. It's cool. <laughs> that, all right, is my mic still good? Is it? Yeah. All right. I, I think we're good. Yeah. All right. Um, let me, the, yeah, you guys talk. I just want to see the, is it where it's uh, going? The, the peak. It's going, right? Yeah, yeah. We're good. good. We're good. Bill, 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 talk, 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 Bill, Bill. We're rolling. Nice. All right. Welcome back to another palpitating episode of Hear Nothing, See Nothing, Say Nothing. I am joined, as always, by my dear friends, Mr. Phil and Mr. Sandry. Today is April 21st, 2018. Welcome. Say I... Nothing said he's showing up later, but <laughs> we all know what that means. I think... Frankly, he's boycotting us. Yeah. He uh, complained last time that uh, he doesn't like to be on the show because we always give him the shitty microphone, which I think makes sense. Yeah. I mean, well, I don't want it. But, right. I, I mean, I don't want it. Phil doesn't want it. Yeah. Zach doesn't want it. So um, it seems. I, I told him he can get a promotion once he starts saying the opposite of nothing. Right. Do you have to like, like give him a word quota? Yeah. He's in, a, he's in an apprenticeship right now, and that's why he's on Shrek. But then if he gets upgraded to say something, then we're going to have to rechange all of our merchandise, our Facebook page, uh, yeah, the URL, or we'll have to find a different say nothing. We'll get a mannequin or your taxidermy ferret from upstairs. Ross will have to be I, super smart. I mean, he is super... I, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. I think but the mannequin... Okay. Is a, you've got the, the headless, yeah, yeah. uh, he's chiseled, I don't know, a Hollister mannequin. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, I bring... got that at uh, Dick's Sporting Goods. I oh, forgot what it was oh, supposed to be. Oh, he's golf? Oh, yeah, okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's I, thought he was, I thought he was dancing. Like, like... I think it's golf or baseball. I'm not... and oh, man. I can see, see either. Is there a mannequin in the chair? Do we have... Or just, I'm telling you, I think he's dancing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That is right. Can can the camera see the mannequin? The camera cannot see the mannequin. Okay, all right. Can you guys briefly describe what the fuck you're talking about? It's just a half body <laughs> looking like it, this. It, it's from torso to neck, and it's like completely naked man. And he's uh, and he's got like an eight pack. And yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, and some and he's sick got a, packs. And a coconut bra. And a coconut bra. So that's why he's dancing. Sure. Yeah. That. And his arms are like up in the air, held together, kind of like if you were if you're about to go for a golf swing. Yeah. Or if you were like dancing with a maraca. <laughs> <laughs> Which obviously the the display was for at Dicks. Well, yeah. I mean, he's got the coconut bra, so yeah, the, yeah, the, the the maraca thing it fits. I mean, it's the cornerstone of any American basement. The oh yeah. The the half mannequin with the coconut bra. Mm -hmm. um, I really like what you've done with the place, Phil. Thanks, man. Uh, just a real quick announcement. I know I like to make a point of mentioning this each episode. I hope it doesn't get too redundant or repetitive, but a very special thank you to our listeners across the pond in Ireland. Keep it up. We love you guys, and we're happy you're enjoying the show. Uh, a second quick little announcement. We reached recently a, a pretty big milestone for the podcast. I think we received our first official complaint about one of our episodes from a dear friend of ours and a loyal listener, and so, part two of episode six, I believe, we took down. Yeah. Um, because the person in question just didn't care for it. And uh, believe it or not, we here at Hear Nothing, See Nothing, Say Nothing, we pride ourselves on how compassionate we are and how understanding we are. And we're not here to make anyone uncomfortable, mm -hmm. especially not those fucking gypsies. Right. And, and you know... I, I hate it when they go after you once you start getting famous, because that exactly. video got the most views somehow. That knows. And, and what do you know? 
I'm I'm offended, you know. It was probably this person just rewatching it again and again oh. in his or her bedroom, just like maybe that's maybe that's how we do it. Is you you pick a, what if a the, single individual to piss off every episode so that they keep viewing it, like hate watching it. There you go. <laughs> beef, that's, beef the stats. A little did bit. they say that? You have to see the shit that they said. <laughs> yeah. Everyone, all my friends, and they'll share it and. And it's a risky marketing strategy, <laughs> but... What if they did that so that they have a reason to complain? Like, what if the, the, it didn't offend them, but they're just like, I'm going to get it famous so I can be one of those people who I go after them and they're famous? I don't... I don't think like, he did a very good job at that, then. He needs to pick... A I'm overthinking target. this. And That's I, my problem. I just hope he keeps listening. So, <laughs> is, that, is that selfish of me? Like, come on, find another episode of Hate. Get our view count up. Yeah. Tell your friends about how shitty we are. Yeah. Like as people, as broadcasters, as mm -hmm. uh, just human beings, and uh, and thank you, thank you again for uh, your patronage and for listening. Um, and it's it's friends and uh, listeners like you that keep this podcast alive. Once we get merch, free merch. Okay. That'll yeah, be. Yeah, that's uh, right. New you got it. Yeah. That's, you got that's a tank top coming your way. Yeah. That, that's the settlement. Right? <laughs> Perfect. Out of court. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Out of court. Here's here's some stickers and a shirt that's two sizes too big. Um, oh, yeah. Triple XL. That's right. That's how we do. Again, mm -hmm. we're compassionate. We care about our listeners. Yeah. Uh, it's good to see you guys. It's good to see you guys. Yeah. Feels, like it's, uh, feels like it's been a minute since we've been here. Yeah. It has been, it has been a little bit. I know it's been, uh, at least in my own life, there's yeah. been a few changes. I know it feels like there's a new addition in the family. Yeah. And Sandra, any, anything new with you? Um, no. All right. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Sorry. No. Continue. Uh, that, you no, just, that pretty much sums yeah, it up. No, I really did. Can you lie? Um, I could. I. Not going to because I can't think of a good lie. Yeah, that's what I heard. <laughs> I heard you were playing in the NBA playoffs. Um. Yes and no. I'm on the bench. Okay. But uh, it doesn't look like I'm gonna play. Courtside is courtside, Dude, you know what I mean? Yeah. Speaking of NBA, have you guys... I, I'm going to this show with Ross, this next show. Have you ever heard of Power Trip? No. No. I have been so fucking nuts about them. They're just really... They're like if Slayer was a punk band. And hmm. so, so just no prolonged evil in solos. It's just straight up like... It, it sounds like when Beavis and Butthead goes to commercial. <laughs> da -da 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 but, anyways, um, I've been really getting into them lately. They're, they're really uh, associated with, I think I mentioned before, Iron Reagan. I don't know if you're... But, so what's, what's really funny, I don't know how they did it, and I don't really know the story behind it, but it's, it's still funny because they're not a known band. They're not. I think they don't have that many likes on Facebook. But, anyways, um, they... Hey, neither uh, do we. Yeah, man. <laughs> so we understand. Mm -hmm. There's somebody bitching them out of... Anyways, um, um, I uh, they they somehow promoted their shit. You know how I, like when I was in a band, I put it on Spotify, iTunes, like tried to spread as much as possible. Yeah. I don't know when you get contracts to put things out there, but somehow Power Trip is like just super thrash punk. It's usually anti-government and uh, just that whole. I don't know what they call it, but like all their stuff is punk about like culture. just fuck life, like. I think one of their albums is like, it might be Iron Reagan or Partridge, but it's like, uh, Eat Shit and Live. I don't know, but... That's beautiful, man. Yeah, yeah. right? Or Worser than, Worser than Death, Nightmare oh. Logic, you know? So they are playing at Reggie's, sold out show, sold out first day. I wanted to, I, yeah. I was not sure if I wanted to go, because it's on a Wednesday. I had to fucking go on, props to Brad out there, mm -hmm. StubHub, and buy, uh. Uh, buy uh, like, tickets worth twice the amount. Well, it's going to be worth it. But the thing, speaking of the NBA, after my ramble, they, uh, they've they been putting their fucking music in random outlets to promote it. Yeah. So they had it, like, on Fox News, a random, like, thrash song. <laughs> what? Like, in the middle of, I, I don't know, all right, and on our next, like, after commercial, we're going to go to Trump now wants to bomb ourselves, you know, and, <laughs> and then the song goes on. And then one of the things <laughs> that I couldn't believe, it had to be fucking staged. At a Chicago Bulls game. You know the air guitar competition? Yeah. Have you guys heard of that? I've or, heard of it. They, they just, they, they zoom in on a random person in the crowd. 
and play, I don't know, Metallica, Slayer, Anthrax? Guns N' Roses? Yeah! I, I don't know what else you could air guitar to. But anyways, uh, ZZ Top? Sure. Harder, <laughs> some sticks? Dude, yeah. anything, really. The Bee Gees. So it's like the Kiss Cam, but a little shittier. Yeah. Okay. And they, uh, <laughs> they, Somehow. They, do they zoom in like this, at this businessman, Sperry shoe, like, just stereotypical, like, office motherfucker, like, professional motherfucker, and they're playing Power Trip. And he just rips his business shirt off and has a Slayer shirt underneath <laughs> and, and, and knows the song perfectly. Isn't that fucking great? That, that's, oh, that's totally scripted. It has to be, right? right? Yeah, I just, I really hope it's not. I just say, I want one of those little things in life that just work out somehow. Off? I want to believe I'm listening to them because I'm stressed out at the office, sure. so <laughs> that probably could have been me. Well, uh, speaking of, like, uh, punk bands, I went, uh, it was just two weekends ago, to a, sh to a Sunday show and saw the, the opener for the main act was a band out of Milwaukee, a punk ska band called Something To Do. Which I thought was really clever, and they kept saying, we're something to do, and I think that's hilarious. And, yeah, it's uh, something to do. And they were absolutely phenomenal, and I'm usually, I don't, I don't delve into that music or that scene that often, but... Can you compare them to anybody else? You know, I, I see, I, like, I, I don't listen to a ton of that music, so I don't even really have, like, mm. a good gauge on, on who they would sound like in yeah. that, you know, like... My the what I think of is you know typical skies like Catch Twenty Two or Streetlight Manifesto sort of deal. I would mm -hmm. say closer to Catch Twenty Two, but again, I don't know a ton about not that, like scene. super poppy like Real Big Fish. Or no, that. not not super poppy. More punk than pop. Okay, and they like uh, and more punk than reggae, right? Oh, way more like punk than reggae. Like not specials. No, not specials. They, I mean, they do. Like there were a couple songs where they had that sort of you know reggae tone to it, but it was a lot heavier, a lot faster. Mm -hmm. um, it was really good though. But they're they're out of Milwaukee, and I'm I'm hoping at some point to plan a, plan a trip out there. Trip out there. It's like an hour and a half over here, yes. but uh, mm -hmm. to go uh, see them play again. All right, you've heard it here first. Something to do. The official punk ska band of Hear Nothing, See Nothing, Say Nothing. <laughs> You're getting another email. You guys mentioned me. Uh, I don't want you talking about that's something. Defamation. Yeah, am I allowed to say that they're an official? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. They're the unofficial. Right. Ireland, keep your fucking mouth shut. <laughs> yeah, it's between, it's between you and us, man. Don't, don't let this get out to Milwaukee. When they ask you, you know, any info, I heard nothing, I saw nothing, I, s that's right. I said nothing. That's right. There you go. That's I got I got to mix up there a little bit cuz I'm I'm a little tweakish today. Why is that? <laughs> I don't I don't know. Just I think the cigar so I I haven't smoked in like 2 months. Really? Cuz my yeah, cuz my stomach's been fucked up, you know? Sure. Yeah. So, I don't know. Cuz I guess this could like raise your heart rate and stuff. <laughs> oh yeah. So <laughs> maybe that's not a good decision. Maybe you've been having stomach troubles because you haven't been smoking as much and you need to smoke more. I mean, I'm not a doctor, but... I think I need to get a knicker up patch, smoke, and vape at the same time. Yeah, I need to be like that Asian kid who, uh, did you see that photo where he's got like 70 cigarettes in his mouth? <laughs> I... How, uh, <laughs> a, how old is a he? A powerful image. He's like five. <laughs> nice. All right. Are they lit? Yeah, they're lighting it with a blowtorch. It was uh, Guinness Book of Records of the most cigarettes smoked at once. By a five-year-old? Five five yeah. Good for them. That's... God. I mean, those lungs can recover. Yeah, yeah right. Is smoking an Olympic yeah. event? Because it sounds like it should be. Well, poker's a sport now, so... Yeah, that's... Yeah, and they have, like, Rocket League and, like... Yeah, that's right, eSports. Yeah, right? Which I, I got into... I, I want to talk about this for a second, because I got into an argument with an old roommate of mine. And you're about to get into another one. Um, about eSports. And how I don't like that it's called a sport. And what is e I don't esports is like is like a competitive. Gaming. I almost thought you meant EA sports. Mm. Sort of. I mean, in a certain way, it's video yeah, right. gaming, but it's like all over it the is place. Video like, game? Yeah, yeah. esports is gaming like like uh, like Hearthstone or like Call of Duty or Counter yeah, Strike. That, that sort of stuff. That, that, that is that considered esports? It's called it? yeah. It's called esports, and I took I took. Uh, I I don't like that that much, and I, I explained why, and I go well, sport. You know, Why? I want the definition the of sport requires, you know, requires physical competitiveness. 
And I was like, I have nothing wrong with, you know, I don't have any problem with there being any sort of, like, video game competitions. I think it's a cool thing. I, yeah. I think, uh, you know, if you want to do that, it's lots of fun. And, and apparently people make a shit ton of money doing it now. But I just don't, I don't like that it's called a sport. And I, th I think pure definition of the word is why. But uh, that did not take kindly in, of my friends of the, uh, of the gaming community yeah. not, uh, not being called uh, e-athletes. So... <laughs> <laughs> But you gotta think, like, is anyone gonna watch it if it's called what it really is? Like, lonely boys play together? Like, <laughs> no, esports, like, that's gonna bring in the marketing money, that's gonna get the viewers. Like, esports! Like, I don't feel bad about it's watching game. this. It's I don't like, see, I don't know if the, the, you know, the old stigma that it's the, it's the lonely kid sitting at home on the computer. I don't know if that stands up. These guys are fucking making, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars. They're rock stars, man. Like, I, th I think that might be changing. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. At the end of the day, you know. I mean, he's still a lonely kid at home. That's right. Making a shitload of money. <laughs> did, uh, did Phil's comment about his cigar, it, or cigar bothering him make you want to have a cigarette? A little. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Anyway, I think you guys are going to try to break the record right here on Hear Nothing, See Nothing, Say Nothing. Oh, God. Oh, my God. God. We're coming to you live. <laughs> I'm getting the blowtorch. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm getting that fucking little five-year-old kid that was at here earlier. <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> no. Yeah. Um, speaking of, yeah. No, any anybody up for a funny Gavin story? Always. Oh, of I, course. Um, I, so uh, recently, I said, you know, I've been having horrible fucking anxiety, horrible stomach problems. I think I think this is how I start off every show. I got horrible anxiety, stomach problems. It's just day to day, guys. <laughs> it's a fucking commercial. I've got diabetes. I've got anxiety. <laughs> no, but. Anyways, um, I was coming home, and I always kind of, like, there's certain days where I just tell, I, I feel mean, like, being a, that fucking cocksucker parent and just yelling at my kid, so I'm just like, Gavin, just give me an hour break, just don't talk to me for an hour, I need to be alone, and then I go scream in the closet, no, <laughs> but, but uh, no, I'll just sit, and I'm like, I just need some fucking silence, you know, and uh, I'm like, alright, I'll try and listen to you, because I felt bad. He goes, yeah, you know what's cool? I, I'm in a gang now. I'm like, oh, oh really? Uh, what do you guys stand for? No, I, I'm not really sure. I, I started hanging out with Peter, and he brought me. We, we kind of have this. Uh, we meet up, and we have meetings in this garage. I'm like, so it's a club, like Little Rascals. He goes, yeah, yeah, but our, our leader, um, it's this girl named Eva. Well, she kind of looks like a boy, but, but she's a girl. But she kind of looks like a boy. I'm like, okay, she's 11. And, uh, but, um... I'm, I'm like, wait a minute, have I ever seen her before? Do I know how she looks? He goes, I don't think so. She's, oh yeah, you know what, she's the deaf girl. I go, oh, okay, she's deaf. And um, so how come, why are you home? Like, why aren't you hanging out with them? So, well, she had to go home, she's asthmatic. I'm like, oh, okay, so you're in this gang. Oh, and she goes, we're fighting against the scooter gang. I'm like, that's, I don't know, that might be some shit to worry about, you know, fighting the scooter gang, and he's got a deaf, asthmatic androgynous leader, you know. Yeah. And yeah. I call that diversity in 2018. Hell's Toddlers. They're the underdogs. Yeah. Hell's Toddlers. Uh, do they need weapons? They use Nerf guns and kick over forts. You can't break skin with Nerf darts. And they do it while riding on their Razor scooters. That's kind of like a drive-by kick over fort. Wait, this so... Is just a, what, uh, this is the slippery slope. Oh, yeah. The, the Deaf Girls Gang uses Razor scooters too? I'm not. I'm not sure. I think. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. Well, if they're the scooter gang, I mean, I would assume they they boycott the scooters. Yeah. Right. So. And you gotta understand. This whole time, I'm like, yeah, I can't fucking register this shit right now. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh -huh. I'm gonna give this kid a chance to talk, and yeah. And you regret it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, well, uh, glad things are going well. That uh, that Gavin joined a gang. Right. Well, it sounds just He's like making it. friends. It sounds right. like a classic socioeconomic like class war, if yeah. you ask me, like the haves versus the have-nots. I mean, I mean, maybe the ones who don't scooters are expensive. Yeah, you know. the ones who don't have scooters might be in like an impoverished area. Very, <laughs> more more of a revolutionary fight, like the Bolsheviks, as opposed to like a gang. I think. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And exactly. she is their mm -hmm. she is their fearless uh, fearless leader. I'm Very. guessing that's how like Fraser's kids. Would have been. Yeah. <laughs> we're the Bolsheviks. No, we're the. Wait, what's what's the other? Oh, I forgot, man. Fucking. 
What, the Romanovs? Not, not, not Romanov. I don't know what the word is I'm looking for. Cossacks. Is that... Cossacks? That sounds I, vaguely... It sounds about right. I've been watching uh, Peaky Blinders. I started watching it with my roommate. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of talk of, of Bolsheviks and communists. And because yeah. one of the characters is a communist in uh, England. I think it's based in the 20s. And they're rounding up the communists and the Bolsheviks and the IRA. And... Uh, it's interesting. And really, that's, that's really all I had to say about it. It's really it's a, it's been a pretty cool show. For I, the most I've been part. watching like, like the only thing I've been watching on Netflix other than like a steady TV show is uh, like history crap. And they had like a whole history of the like rise and fall of Russian Empire, and it was really fucking cool because it's like Dude, there, Russia has a lot of really interesting stuff. I mean, Russia's a terrifying place today. Yeah. But, uh, well, actually, it kind of always has been a terrifying place if you look into the history of it. Like, and damn near indestructible because no one else can survive in that weather. No one else really wants so unless to. You want, unless, yeah, I would say, unless you want to build an Inuit army, I think you're you're pretty screwed trying to take Russia on their own soil. At least history has taught us that. So we admire and respect our Russian Russian brethren, right? <laughs> dude, dude, you know, this reminds me of, I'm sorry. I was watching, uh, have you guys ever seen The Green Room? No. No. It's it's awesome. Once you watch it, you'll get hooked. It's um it's an unknown show. Um, it's on. I don't even know what it was originally on. It's I was watching it on YouTube at work. But it they take four. It's like politically incorrect. But instead of Bill Maher and bitching about politics, it's like uh, one comedian host and four random comedians. Okay. Like stand up comedian. It's fucking great. And on one of them, they had like Joe Rogan, Tommy Chong. <laughs> I think uh, Doug Stanhope and then somebody else I forgot, but they those were three are a great mix. Uh, that that sounds that sounds fun. They, they have everybody on there. It's fucking. I think uh, the one that got me started on it was like Patrice O'Neill, because oh, yeah, I think rest they, in peace. Yeah, I I got hooked on Patrice, but anyways, they um they were talking about obviously fucking you got Joe Rogan and Tommy Chong, so you got to mention weed mm -hmm. well, and Doug Stanhope yeah, too. Dude. Doug Stanhope is like yeah, I was gonna say yeah. it's like the that's the half of his act. Yeah, being yeah. High. Yeah, you fu well, well there I don't like him. Really? I don't yeah. I don't mind him. I think some of his stuff's pretty funny. Yeah. Uh super high me I wasn't a huge huge fan of, but you know. I think I think he's okay. I don't I don't dislike him. But um they they were talking about uh cuz you were you were you're talking about like how it's fucking crazy over at Russia. It just reminded me of yeah. Vietnam. And um I think Joe Rogan's like ranting, you know, just going, "Yeah, you know what the fuck? It should be legalized. What the fuck does anybody have?" You know, any control over what anybody says, what they could do, if it doesn't affect anybody but themselves. What the fuck is that shit? <coughs> and then, like, Chong and, and, like, this made me laugh my fucking, like, pee my pants, because this is so, like, typical Chong. He just goes, uh, he's like, yeah, man, you know, you know, that's why we lost Vietnam, because, like, you know, you know, people, they fucking, like, like, the... Like the West Memphis Three, that they're like, yeah, they shut up and they fucking rape those kids because they were on weed. When when alcohol is the shit that gets you fucking violent and rape people and fuck up people, weed gets you chill, and that's why everybody in Vietnam was like, I don't want to shoot anybody. Let's just smoke. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I don't know if that's exactly how Vietnam yeah. went. <laughs> I saw Forrest Gump, and it is. <laughs> oh, it's true. Yep. Yeah. Except for Lieutenant I, Dan. I oh, am obsessed mm. with Vietnam shit. I, like, I, I have a whole folder of Vietnam movies. <laughs> I just finished Deer Hunter, and it's the most boring fucking movie in my life. That's probably the worst <laughs> Vietnam movie I ever saw. Really? Yeah. I mean, it's it's fun because it's one of Christopher Walken's and Robert De Niro's first movies. There's like fucking 20 in there. Really? Yeah. I, I, I don't know who else is in there that's like known, really, but... Oh, Meryl Streep, when she's like 20, but... <laughs> So, I'm so like offhand, like oh, I guess yeah, Meryl Streep's in it too. Whoever you know, if you've heard of her. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but yeah, it was just really fucking. That's why when you mention your friend who, oh, they they just went to uh, the the MMA fighter who just went oh, to like yeah. and got mixed up in shit, and now they don't know where he is in Asia, right? <laughs> well, well yeah. Yeah, the whole movie is about they go to Vietnam, they get they get um, they get. Maybe I'm not telling it right. I got shitty memory, so maybe I'm spicing it up a little for our viewers. But <laughs> I, I um, th th they get captured by the Vietnamese, and you know when they kept them in like those swamp cages where, yeah. they, where they get super like pruney and like too much water. While 
they're there to wait to get um, the Vietnamese would bet on each other playing Russian roulette with a fucking revolver. And they see that shit like Robert De Niro and Christopher Walken. So they're like, fuck man, you know what? Fuck America, we're staying here. We're turning this into a game. And they start like just just like fuck. running a running a Russian roulette league, is that Yeah, yeah. And and Robert De Niro's like, No, I got out of there to go home and then they can't find Christopher Walken. Oh no! So, oh lord! And then uh, I don't know. You want me to ruin the ending? May as well. Uh, yeah, I'm yeah. probably not gonna watch it. To be honest. Yeah, yeah. It, it, <laughs> it's it's three to four hour movie. All right. Spoiler so. alert for all of our listeners out there. Phil, let yeah. it rip. Yeah. No. They uh, Robert De Niro goes back to Vietnam to try and find Christopher Walken, and Christopher Walken's kind of like you know Marlon Brando's in Apocalypse Now. Yeah. Where he got sucked in and he's just completely wigged out. Yeah. He, uh, he's playing Russian roulette. Christopher Walken is against another person instead of betting. Because he's getting more money by doing it himself. Yeah. To, to his head. And uh, Robert De Niro's like, dude, you don't fucking remember me? It's me, Mikey. It's me. It's me. And he, and he um, before they went to Vietnam, they went hunting. And he's just like, you got to kill that deer with one shot. One shot. Don't make it fucking torture. Don't make it torture. Kill him with one shot when they go deer hunting. Mm-hmm. And then Christopher Walken, like, last moment before he pulls the trigger, he's like, one shot, right? And then he blows his brains. Ooh. So, oh, okay. Yeah. All right. I mean, but but that was, like, the only good part of the whole fucking movie. <laughs> what, he shot himself? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, well, I, well I mean, because well, it's uh, a long-ass build-up, you know? I, I don't know. Sure. sure. Uh, I'd like to turn the conversation back to something you mentioned uh, while we were talking about Deer Hunter, mm-hmm. uh, Sandry's MMA friend, <laughs> um, near, and I feel like the the audience needs to hear that story. Uh, I don't I don't know if I want to go too into it, but, but uh, it's uh, we might get a, some complaints. Had a, had a friend of mine who uh, I won't give any names or anything. Who mm-hmm. is an MMA fighter here and uh, went went to China to train a while back, and then. Um, a couple of years ago, just kind of disappeared into China, and we we don't know exactly exactly what happened. There's some there's some shady stuff there, um, mixed up and so, some other stuff. We don't know exactly. It's something about an underground fighting ring, but yeah. And, uh, yeah so that's uh, that's that's that. Yeah. That's yeah that's, all right. That's uh, that's really uh, where that went. We don't know anything. We haven't heard from him in a while. Um, I know maybe it was a, a year and a half ago he randomly showed up back here and saw a couple of our friends and then disappeared again. Did did he seem different? You know, was it shockingly no? Oh, okay. <laughs> not not really. Um, I think that's kind of his mo though. Is uh, he's a he's a rock. Sure. He's the rock. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna name names. <laughs> <laughs> We're not gonna name names. Um, <laughs> Dwayne Johnson, that would be some great views if we got some props to pissing him off. <laughs> I think we're Jumanji sucked. Was he in the new Jumanji? Yeah, he's the main guy. Really? I, I didn't watch I actually it. heard it. It's supposed to be really good. Yeah, really? Which, which kind of shocked me because I saw the previous part. I'm like, oh god, this is gonna suck. And then everyone, every review I heard and everyone I talked to saw it was like, it was hilarious. It was a great movie. Mm-hmm. So I'm probably not gonna watch it, but. Yeah. There's a, there's the endorsement out there. Apparently, everyone I know liked it. So and there you go. You know, and they're all renowned movie critics. That's right. So we have very famous friends. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, Speaking of, or were you gonna say something? No, I was just gonna say like Jumanji always felt to me like a cheap ripoff of Hellraiser. You know, like hmm. you know, like getting sucked into the box or like now you're in the magical jungle or whatever. Like, yeah. Isn't Jumanji older than Hellraiser? Anyway, remember. Phil, you had something to say? <laughs> <laughs> well, they might redo Hellraiser with, you know, Dwayne Johnson with a bunch of pins in his head. That'd be fucking amazing. I, I'd pay to see that. Can you smell it with those fucking pins in his head? <laughs> <laughs> no, but you got to go see these jabronis. Well, but any, um, because you were mentioning like a past friend, you know, that mm-hmm. kind of just... You, you don't even know what happened, and you kind of don't want to know. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not trying to look that far into it. I don't. Yeah. Really, I, I'd love to see him again. He's a he's a nice guy, and uh, miss him. But 
also not going to get involved in whatever right. potentially illegal ass shit's going on there. Yeah. Uh, you don't know how far the rabbit hole goes. I don't know how far the rabbit hole goes, and I'm going to walk the fuck away from that rabbit yeah. hole. Well, I'm going to stay stateside here and, uh, and not follow him to China. Well, it goes all the way to China, and that's like straight through the earth. So that's it, is, it, is, it is pretty deep. Eventually it got called the Wall of China. It, mm. it used to be the rabbit hole of China. Mm -hmm. But now it's the, the Wall of China. The wall of China. Yeah, there's shit underground there, and they're going to make an Indiana Jones about it. Are they? No, I just made that. Oh, that man. seems like the, the next logical place. Yeah, I mean, they they went with aliens last time, so... Tunnel to the past? I don't know. Was it? Was that? I thought last Crystal Skull was the last. Crystal Skull is the last one. There was, oh. uh, there was alien shit about that. All right, right? no spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I completely forgot about it, because I, I think I only saw it once. My favorite one was uh, the Last Crusade, the Grail. Yeah, yeah, the, that's, uh, I think that's definitely the best one, with the face melting, and, yeah. That, yeah. Is Sean Connery still alive? I don't think so. I don't know. I keep hearing he's a complete piece of shit, though. Yeah, like, he just, like, uh, like uh, doesn't, very open about, about beating women. Yeah. You know, I believe one of them, he said something along the lines of, it's okay to slap a woman if she's acting hysterical. Um, well, at least he has rules, but yeah. <laughs> but uh, he comes from a simpler time. There's yeah. a lot of gray areas. I think that's the defense Bill Cosby's coming up with. Uh, ooh, he was acquitted, no? No, it was a mistrial. Um, so I guess sort of, but he was. They're recharging because there's new allegations. Go figure. Mm -hmm. um, about drugging and and raping women. Um, America's favorite dad, everybody. Yeah, I think that's gonna also be, possibly be uh, some sh some like the Columbine shooter's defense. Even after he's dead, it's gonna be some Tupac shit, and he's gonna be like, "It was a different time." Yeah. Well, that's like the that affluenza guy. I I just read about. Do you know who I'm talking about? <laughs> okay. <laughs> no. So his defense was his defense wa was that he didn't life. understand. He didn't understand. Kind of, he <clears throat> he killed I think four people in a drunk driving accident, mm -hmm. and then fled to Mexico. Um, I think it was with his mother. Spring Caitlin, break. Caitlyn Jenner. And <laughs> no, but, but um, yeah, she hit someone and like killed him with the car, right? Yeah. But it, yes, yes, she did. Um, everyone forgets that too. But but uh, Bruce Jenner at the time um, mm. got got off on it because he was it's such a such a big name. Yeah. And they were able to to use that in the defense. But yeah, everyone forgets that she uh, she killed somebody in a drunk driving accident. Yeah. Um. But the, this guy did kind of did the same thing, just a spoiled ass kid who comes from a super you know trust fund baby, super rich family, and he used he used the defense of affluenza, which was the idea that he didn't fully comprehend consequences of his actions because he grew up so pampered that he didn't uh, like didn't it didn't register with him mentally, and it worked. Hmm. So he, and he just, like, I just read about that. Infuriating, right? Just, like, absolutely infuriating. Dude, if, if you got money, you get away with yeah. anything. So he just, I think he served two years in prison or something like that, maybe less. And they, he recently, like, walked. Mm -hmm. And it was just, I don't know, it just, it just makes me, it just makes me so angry because if, if yeah. I hit someone in, in my car, I, 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 I could be like, I don't understand consequences either because... I'm so poor. <laughs> like, I, I, I feel like laws are made that way though, so that rich can have little loopholes for themselves, you know? Well, it's because, the, I mean, it's not really surprising that it's, it seems that the, the wealthy have always kind of run things yeah. and it's not... Honestly, as long as you get a lawyer, you will fucking get away with it. Like, I... This is incredibly... I could not fucking believe this. It was a miracle. I was, um, I think like five or seven years ago, I was going to go skydiving for my birthday. Mm. And I was so fucking pumped because they had like a... If you take four people or three people or more, instead of 300 a person, it's like 150 a person. And, yeah. I, and I got like, dude, being an adult, how hard is it to fucking get four people together? You hear that? Say nothing. <laughs> Anyways, so, um, we, uh, so, so I am, and, and it was in, um, I think, like, Peoria, maybe? Okay. And I was living in Chicago. Beautiful, sunny Peoria. That's yeah. That's right. And so I'm, like, fucking speeding there, speeding there, and I had already gotten 
two tickets that were over 20. Mm. So when you get the third one... It's reckless driving, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So they're supposed to take your license and lock you up. So they took my license. But they got to catch you to lock you up. Vroom, yeah. vroom. Well, well, no, no. no. They, they, they took my license and they're like, yeah, you can't have your license for like... I think it's a year or two. For, uh, you got to take a class. You got to like yeah. have probation and all that. I literally just found I like you know those billboards you see in the ghetto like hey are you disabled I'll give you millions of dollars hire me you know one eight hundred yeah just, fucking... uh, just like yeah some uh, television ad lawyer yeah, yeah I I got a lawyer like that I think I paid only like four hundred dollars off cleared my record. Actually, completely cleared it. Yeah, I was say I actually had a, a semi similar experience. I and, when I was and re real quick, you you know what the excuse was? Be because like you mentioned the affluenza thing. Yeah. They said that he was not aware of the consequences in a different county. Mm. It's like, oh, I guess, you know, in Cook County you can only go up to sixty, but I didn't know that you can't go to like hundred and twenty here. <laughs> yeah. I'm just such a, isn't there isn't there a saying that uh, ignorance of ignorance of the law is no excuse for breaking it? Yeah. Apparently it is. <laughs> a lawyer didn't say that. A lawyer did not say that. In fact, it sounds like a lawyer threw that out the window. The lawyer was just like, "You don't say it either. I'll I'll, I'll say it in a different way." Yeah. yeah. It's all about yeah. It's all about the wording, isn't it? <laughs> but no, I had a, I had actually a similar experience when I was eighteen. I was arrested for uh, petty possession. Um. Oh man, you had all those Car Baker's albums. <laughs> yes, yes, I, I did. Uh, I was free falling through uh, Southern Illinois, <laughs> or I guess not south of here, uh, Central Illinois, and uh, I got pulled over. You know, the guy guy said I I, I used to drive this old piece of shit uh, Ford Ranger pickup truck, which I miss every day of my life. But the thing had no ABS brakes and shook if you brought it up to like sixty five miles an hour. Um, so, the whole pullover, the guy said I was going 65 miles an hour coming up to a stop sign, which I stopped at. And I know just physically <laughs> that that truck, if it was going 65 miles an hour, would not have stopped for a, for a stop sign. It would it would have slid right there. There's no way. So I I, I was kind of calling it. Huh? Was the tread down like go kart wheels? Oh yeah, it was bad. <laughs> I, the, the, I hadn't. I, the tires were the same ones that I had got on. I think I drove that car for seven years, and the tires were the same ones that came on it used. It was like a 1994, and this was 2010, 2011. I so it's a classic, man. Oh, yeah. It, it was uh, a year away from being an antique, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, So I got, I got pulled over for a bogus speeding ticket, to, wh to which case I had a knife on me, and it was an assisted open knife, so it had a spring in it, which mm -hmm. I had bought in Illinois legally. Mm. Now, what I learned, because I got a lawyer, <laughs> was that, and, and this is bullshit, and this is real in Illinois, they are legal to sell, they are illegal to own. What? So I can, you can sell them, you can legally buy them, but it is illegal to own them. Yeah, yeah, that's fucked, right? Yeah, it seems a little yeah. bizarre. So, so he gets that, and and he pulls that out, and then it's it's sort of the is there anything else I I need to know about in the car? To which I'm like, no, no, there's nothing else that you know. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, which I I don't know if they have to say this. When he was questioning me, you know, they always go through the like, is there this? Do you have a firearm? Any illicit drugs or anything? You know, in the car, like anyone's ever gonna fucking tell you that if they have it. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that he said was nuclear materials, <laughs> and I don't know if you're supposed to say that or if this guy was just like fucking with me. But I laughed when he said that, and I think you that's part of the reason why he wanted to arrest me. <laughs> <laughs> you're not taking me seriously. So they they actually. Um, you know, he took this knife, and then it was the, can you step out of the vehicle, sir? And I said, okay. <laughs> like, well, at this point, I'm kind of fucked. Yeah, all right. So, you know, searches me. There's nothing on me. He's like, can I search your car? I was like, no. No, you can't. Um, and then he calls a canine unit. And in Illinois, there had recently been a court case that said that Illinois police, without reasonable cause, can just search anybody with a canine. So even without, yeah, even without uh, or sorry, probable cause, he can just run a canine around my car, and if the dog sits, then he can search it um, without permission. Which is bullshit, because uh, there, was a, there was actually a... Because the dog must have been tired. 
she said. Well, no, there's a, there's a report done a while back on this about how unreliable the canines are, and they found that a lot of the canine trainers use hand signals to make the dog, uh, like, sit. And, like, to make the dog do the signal that there's something there. Mm -hmm. So they, so, uh, I don't know if that's what happened to me, but I know that that's something that could happen. I had uh, a gram of weed uh, stashed in, um, in, like, the speaker cavity behind, behind uh, the seat. And they found it? They found it, and the the canine cop actually, uh, I think he felt a little bad, the canine cop. The original cop was a dick, but the canine cop was kind of, was like, cool as hell. And uh, I say that as he's, like, putting me in cops and shoving me in the back of his car, sure, but, sure. but he was a nice guy. He was guy. gentle. He was uh, yeah. loving. And he described to me exactly why the dog smelled it, and explained to me how to hide it better next time. So what's the um, secret? So, well, Up the, the problem was there was a little piece of insula door insulation on the passenger side that was sticking out, which I knew about because the car was a piece of shit and it was falling apart. And he goes, with that insulation, it broke the seal so the dog could smell into the car. And uh. he goes, and because you had it in a singular place, the dog could pinpoint it. Uh, and, he, and he's like, it sounds weird, but having it, uh, having it more... You need more out, weed. Confuses, he's like, confuses the dog. And I was like, well, I'm not going to, like, let you advocate for me, like, pushing, like, having larger amounts of this illicit substance in the vehicle. But, you know, thanks for the advice. I'll mm -hmm. fix the insulation. <laughs> um, but I was arrested, and they tried to charge me with felony contraband weapon and felony secret compartment. Uh, because but it, but because it, I had it in the, <clears throat> in the speaker cavity, which got thrown. They immediately, the... The, whatever the attorney general or whoever or state's attorney immediately threw those out. We're like, you can't charge him with. Is, is you can't it, charge him with these. I thought it was like if it's under an eighth, then it's legal. No, like uh, this under. was before the decriminalization. Okay. So this is it uh, decriminalized. It is up to I think eight grams in Illinois now. I I didn't think it was decriminalized. I thought it was just. Like you're not going to jail anymore. You're just paying a fine. Well, that's what yeah. that's what decriminalization is. Is it's, oh, really? it's essentially like traffic court. It's like getting a speeding ticket. Oh. Up to a certain amount, and I know the city of Chicago has a larger amount as well. So, like in the city of Chicago, I think it's like like twenty some grams or something like that. You can. It's just a ticket. Huh. And Springfield actually, I think since the '90s, had some sort of law where where police were allowed to just. Um, to just confiscate petty possession instead of charging. Huh. Um, either that or a campus police officer lied and stole my weed. <laughs> <laughs> Both very likely. <laughs> yeah, uh, but no, so I got arrested for, and I and I had 144 bottle rockets in the car too, which, keep that, uh, keep, remember that because There's that saved nuclear, my ass. <laughs> nuclear material. Oh, yeah. So, so, the, so I get arrested for petty possession. And you said 144? Over 144. And the dude tried to charge, this dude was, like, was out to get, like, did not like me. Tried to charge me with 144 counts of uh, illegal possession of fireworks. To which, uh, to which a judge went, fucking no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, so I went to court, got it, you know, got a lawyer, just like some, some random dude, like, I do, I do these sorts of cases. Peter uh, Francis Geraci. It, yeah, so uh, like that sort of dude only in whatever county we were in. Um, yeah, yeah. And like got him to throw out everything except for the fireworks charge. So that's the only thing that ever would show up on my record, and I think it's that's gone now. But pretty good. Yeah, uh, although I did think that I did think it was kind of funny that they made me go through a drug counseling class for uh, <laughs> sure. for uh, marijuana abuse. Um, you have a problem with that? Yeah. That that gram say, that speaker. one yeah I would say that one gram in my speaker really really threw my the trajectory of my life off course that you didn't even get charged with or was that like the the trade off like that was kind of drop a, the charge he'll go to that was kind of like the trade off is like I got a fine um, I had to do community service which the the community service officer in Springfield liked me so I was supposed to do a hundred hours I did maybe eight. And he just like signed off on all of it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't care. Yeah. Well, he, he working that position is probably community service on its own. Like I don't care. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah, a, I'm just doing my time too. You know what? The, I, I I do think there was a hint of uh, a hint of racism there because a lot of the community service in Springfield I, I did a lot with uh, people of color, and uh, he definitely favored me over them, um, which was a bizarre experience to. Was it to pretty feel blatant? Not super blatant, but like there are a few comments here and there that kind of made me feel like, 
That's what you're doing's not right. I like you better like, than the black I'm also, people. I was like, but I'm also like, you're you're a parole officer, so I can't really like. I don't feel comfortable. Like I don't know what happens if I'm like, hey, this, this is kind of shitty. What you're doing? And they'd be like, hey, you're doing 150 more community service hours. And say. Like, but yeah, there's some weird shit with that. But I only did like I did like eight hours. I think I worked at like a Habitat for Humanity like Dude, when store. I, <clears throat> I had like a how... really cool parole officer when I was in high school. He like all we talked about was awesome punk related books that we that like we read. <laughs> and growing up like in Chicago, listening to punk like Naked Raygun and all all that shit. Just I don't know. It was kind of weird. That's all we ever talked about. Hmm. But it but it makes me think what you mentioned about the canines like. Mm -hmm. When they when they train them to sniff shit out, does that make dogs that look for coke addicted? Because they're sniffing out, you know. Uh, I don't know the answer to that. I mean, I don't know how they pick up the scent. So, right, so maybe it. those maybe those dogs. All right, are, that's enough, Charlie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, speaking, you're close enough. Speaking of coke, though, they actually um, I don't think it was cocaine that they did, but they they stuck a uh, a like scope camera into the bed lining of my truck looking for stuff and kept like asking me questions about like if I was Dude, smuggling what the shit. Fuck, oh man. yeah, like it was some like small because of a small knife. small tiny tiny little town. I think the dudes were just bored. For sure. Yeah, like, yeah. Well, yeah. we got these things. Let's use them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say they got a new they got a new scope camera. You with, know where uh, the scope is going up next, Mister. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. I think I think I might have won money on that settlement if, if that's where that would have gone. Daryl, relax. He's what? All right. Oh, that, well, he's yeah, got that, nuclear material. He's a commie. Some some of those small towns in, in Illinois that does kind of they can go that direction. Goes that direction. Do you remember where you were? I do. I don't. It was. I don't want to name any names. Okay. I do know right. exactly. I I uh, every time I pass it, I I flip the bird a little bit to it, but. All right. I don't want to disparage any police officers in any individual area. Like I said, the K-9 cop was cool. The yeah. original cop was a dick. Ah, uh, I know his name, too. <laughs> <laughs> what is it for our listeners? Spe speak no, 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 no. I'm not gonna... Well, I guess if you don't know where, the, where it was, it was Officer Swanson. <laughs> and... All right, now can I guess where it was? Go for it. And if I guess right, will you tell me? Do you remember this? Because I know you've heard this story before. No, I don't remember. <laughs> okay. Elburn. Uh, no. Damn. All right, I'm out of guesses. <laughs> you know, spree, speaking of, like, weird, uh, you know, um, you're talking about spring knife and, like, defense things. <laughs> have you heard of the cat claw? I, I have not heard of the cat claw. What the fuck is that? <laughs> you heard of that, Bill? No. No. Uh, well, this is actually real. You know the Joe McHale show? No. No. They, I, I never fucking heard of it either. <laughs> Kelly always gets mad at me about it because it's pretty much Tosh.0 before Tosh.0. Because Tosh.0 stole, like, stole this guy's shit. It was this guy, Joe McHale, and he had a show before that exactly the same, just taking random ridiculous shit and then commenting on it. And there's a commercial, this is fucking real. You know those spring things um, that you work on carpal tunnel or anxiety? That, um, they're like, you, you keep them in your hand and you squeeze them constantly? Oh, oh, oh um, they're for, <clears throat> they're also used, all right. I only know this because I did this for a while for, uh, like, thinking that it would help me with like my guitar work. Yeah. Is they're um they're supposed to like build uh like finger muscles and dexterity. Yeah. You're talking they have like the four things with the separate springs on them, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. That or sometimes they just have the two handles. Yeah, with like the the like loop spring, yeah. right? Yeah. Kinda you never seen that Bill? Nope. It looks kinda like a nutcracker. Yeah, a little bit with like black handles generally. Yeah. yeah. Nope. I'm well, thinking of like the rubber bands or you go like No, 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 no it, just one hand. Just one in hand. hand. Think of yeah. Up. Think of like a nutcracker if a nutcracker had spring resistance. Yeah. And um, like the nutcracker suite, like Tchaikovsky. Exactly yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Building finger strength through. Like squeezing uh, your hands to that song. Through Russian art. It's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> no, but so, so they have this spring for for one hand, yeah. and when you close it down, like the guitar thing you're talking about, Ooh. there's claws that come out of it. That come out and you're it's a legally a defense weapon, and the reason why they made it that way is because it's a, it's a little bit hollowed out in the claw part, so it's exactly modified like a cat. It's called the cat claw, and it's exactly my because it looks you know when cats put their paws down the claws yeah. pop, 
it's made that way hollowed out because <clears throat> when you fucking go after someone, they were they were doing it on a grapefruit. It slices a grapefruit in four because when you go after someone, it tears their flesh and it gives them enough DNA to to find the you know offender. <laughs> ah, oh, that. Oh. I saw. First off, it sounds like a brutal fucking ass weapon, but I guess for for like self defense and prosecution purposes. Right? Uh, it reminds me of clever. Isn't that? Isn't that? It's kind of like that weapon in Doom. Isn't that the weapon when, before, when instead of punching you have like that claw? Like, oh yeah. Okay. Or is, or is that like Zelda? <laughs> no, I think that's Doom. Yeah, because okay. you like swipe across. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Anyways, I don't know if Zelda has. Is there a claw weapon in any of the Zeldas? You know what? No, I'm thinking of um, Mystic Quest. Mystic Quest. Is, is the shitty Mystic Final Quest. Fantasy that everyone hated. That was like, wait, Crystal Chronicles? No, no, it was like the first or second one on Super Nintendo. And it was mm -hmm. and it, it was called Mystic Quest, and everybody hated it because it was... Um, Final Fantasy was made, you know, originally in Japan and everything, and then they yeah. took it to America to try and make the first RPG game on Super Nintendo. So they made it super fucking easy because they're like, ah, oh, Americans are stupid, you know? So Everybody it was it was it. pretty fucking. Yeah. It's true, but although it, have you played some of the like uh, the un, the Japanese unreleased like games for a lot of those early systems? Like there's there's a couple like Mario like Mario games that were unreleased that are impossible. unbelievable. Like how difficult they are. <laughs> like on uh, you have you uh, played any uh, Mario Maker? I'm not an e athlete. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but me neither. Apparently, <laughs> I was I was no good at that. But like uh, Mario Maker, there, you can do you know there there was. Oh wait, a, is that like Mario Art? Yeah, where you can design your own levels and shit. I might be thinking of the same. Or am I? Is there a Mario Paint? Yeah, that was from the Super. Yeah, yeah, that's di that's yeah, yeah. different. Um, but yes, there was Mario Paint, and that was a lot of fun. When yeah, I was around. You need the Super Nintendo mouse, and it's like why. I'm not gonna buy a fucking Super Nintendo mouse <laughs> my, for one goddamn game. I think game. it was my uncle that had it. Someone had it, mm -hmm. the, so I didn't. I didn't have to spend my hard-earned allowance on that. Um, but no, their their Super Mario Maker reminds me. There's there, or at least there used to be. I don't know if they still have the like con connectivity for it. I heard something that they didn't. Um, but they, you know, different people through through whatever their online service like would make thing. It would make courses and share them yeah and some of these guys made them so like specific and difficult to do and honestly like you had to hit everything with pinpoint precision and i honestly believe those were easier than half of those like japanese release only games mm -hmm. like i don't even know if they're like i've i've seen people like in videos beat those levels I, I think it's a lie. I bet they slow it down <laughs> then lie. speed it up. Yeah, I think I think someone like hacked into it to make to make it beatable because I think it was just like I think it was some programmer's joke. You're like, <laughs> they I think, think there's being, a way, but there's you're not. I think you're being e athletist right there. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know how you mentioned that you didn't want to mention the city. Oh, you have you a were, guess. What do you think? No, no, no. I I, I want to mention something, and I'm definitely mentioning the city. <laughs> Uh, this is a random thing that I looked up at work, once again, because, um, I don't know, I just couldn't explain, so here's what, I'll get to it, but here's what got me on the top, well, no, I'll, I'll tell you what I looked up and then I'll tell you how, why I got to that subject, but I looked up my, like, old neighborhood, which is, like, apparently it's called Dunning in Chicago, mm -hmm. which is surrounded by, like, Norwich, Elmwood Park, yeah. and then there's, like, Schiller Park, and then there's Melrose Park, yeah, I drove through there like almost every day. Yeah, and, and it's like a super, like I mentioned before, Polish, Italian, Irish neighborhood. And, dude, I looked up, I looked it up on Urban Dictionary. It's like the perfect fucking description. Like, every chick there is just like a dumb white girl looking to be a baby mama. ASAP. Every guy is either in the mob or the union, or, you're, or you, don't, you, know, you don't exist, you're a piece of shit. And everybody there, their golden years are high school because they hang out with those people for the rest of their fucking life and become average Joes. And, like, the reason why I thought about that, oh. like, dude, that's the perfect explanation because, um, 
my buddy, I've seen Carlos, my buddy Carlos, uh, contact me. I haven't seen him in like 10 fucking years. Uh, Bill knows Carlos. I hung out with him um, Thursday. And what's funny is we had a friend, there's this kid named White Boy. Uh, his name's White Boy because he was like the only, he lived in North Lake right next to Meadows Park. Mm -hmm. North Lake and Stone Park are all like trailer park Latin King gangs. It's the shittiest fucking neighborhood in like the Northwest. And um, he, I, I, I don't even, I'm not even going to talk about him. He's so fucking deep in that shit. Like he's mm -hmm. just, he, he's like all those rappers that got tattoos all over their face and shit. Mm -hmm. he, he, he just, he's going down a downward spiral and there's no way to save him. And it's sad because I used to be cool with this guy. But he, told Carlos not to hang out with me because he said, no, dude, you can't hang out with Phil. He fucking, dude, he, he told me and he try, he was trying to blow me. He fucking blows guys now. He's gay. And I'm like, what? Wait, I you, mean, you don't? I, I'm like, yeah, so you're not going to be friends with me because of that? And who's been I, working I was you trying, the table I was gonna, this whole time? Yeah, I, that's, uh-oh. Yeah. <clears throat> it was my cat, dude. Come on. <laughs> Come on, man. Somebody's going to write a complaint. Better your cat than the cat claw, you know? Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, never mind. But but it just made me think like all those fucking people from their neighborhood. Like if if essentially what it was is he he was just the like he found out he was just weirded out by me. He just thought I was a complete weirdo. And basically, like I said, if you're not in the mob or you're not in the union, you're gay. That's, that's how it is over there. Because and like the the gun nut at my work, he grew up in those same neighborhoods. And like I said, he, he so is he gay too? Because it doesn't seem like well. He, yeah, yeah the, well, they thought he was gay because he used he to... He seems pretty almost anti-gay. Yeah, well, they thought he was gay because he was sponsored by Zero and uh, used to skate for Andrew Reynolds. Oh, what? Really? Yeah, he used, he used to be sponsored by them and, he, and like, he hung out with them and shit. He fucked up his knees, so now he's obsessed with guns. No, but... How did he fuck up his knees? Shot yeah. twice. Mm. In the knees, dude. Spent a lot of time on I'm his knees, you, maybe. I'm telling you, mm. he's not in the I, union. I, I heard, yeah, I heard. Not that's my, all I'm saying. That's that's exactly what I was about to say, man. But I don't know. I thought that was kind of funny. But I'll so, be on. So, oh, so Carlos. Yeah. Oh yeah. So so what's you know how you kind of mentioned like you're fucked up straight by your friend disappearing in China. I'm like, <laughs> like, dude. You know how I said I have a like bad. Obviously, I have bad memory. And I was, um, here, I'm going to let my scare real quick, so. Do, 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 do. I don't know, for anyone who's been paying attention, uh, Bill and I have been, like, sipping our beers at the exact same time and lighting cigarettes at the exact same time. I think we're just going to keep that hammered up for the rest of the night. Are we soulmates? I think we are. That's. And I've been sucking both of your dicks at the exact yeah. same time. Yeah. But anyways, um, he reminded me of all this shit. That I completely didn't fucking remember. Like, I told him, I'm like, you know, how come, how, like, what happened to you, man? Because he kind of, he kind of just completely fucking disappeared. And long story short, I mean, I don't know if he wants to hear it, but fuck it. We need more complaints. More views. <laughs> no, um, he, no, he just, he had a real bad, like, alcohol problem. And he kind of, you know, kind of like we stopped hanging out at the shack. The punk shack, you know, murder shack that, well, I did. All those people had really bad fucking substance abuse problems. A lot, Greg stopped hanging, you know, Ian, all, all, Derek, like, everybody Wait, fucking... Ian stopped hanging out at the murder shack? I don't think he knows he's at the murder shack, <laughs> even though he lives there. That's, that's how bad of a problem Ooh. he had. Okay. No, but, and, but I mean, um, so, you know, that's just, he, Carlos disappeared kind of because of that, and he didn't want to get, and he's like, yeah, man, like, you know when I drew the line? I'm like, no, when? And he goes, well, White Boy told us, well, there's Omar, who's a really cool guy. He goes, Omar told us to go to this cool fucking party um, in this trailer park in Stone Park. I'm like, man, I don't want to go to a fucking trailer park. But it's really cool. He's like, he's like yeah. It's he's like, dude, you got to help me. I'm trying to get blown by Phil. No, by this chick <laughs> named Phil. No, but, um, I call her Phil. She hates me. Yeah. So he's like, dude, come on, come on, guys. Just go with me. Like, I don't want to go there alone and whatever. So they go there. And he's like, they're fucking blasting black and yellow. It's strictly Latin King party. And he's like, I am gonna Wait, try and black and yellow. Yeah. 
What is black and yellow? Black and yellow. Black and yellow. Black and yellow. Yeah, exactly. Who was that? Is that? I don't remember. It was popular uh, years ago. Is it Chief like, Keef? Is it Chief Keef? I don't know. Alright, anyway, so Any, anyways, they're fucking blast a anyways, it's a uh Carl's like, yeah, I'm gonna have as very little alcohol here as possible because I don't wanna be mooching off these guys. And like one of the guys was like somebody that I guess bullied him. It, or that he used to bully in like high school. It's like, oh. and he's, like, he's like, Oh hey man, yeah, you used to fuck with me, huh? It's like, Yeah, I did. I mean, we're cool now though, right? He's like, Yeah, I guess. Here, have some of this shit and he had like some you know, codeine, vo vodka mixed, Hawaiian punch, you know, oh, fucking... Jesus. Or some lean. So, yeah, yeah, lean. Pur purple drink, whatever. And he fucking, um, he didn't want to sip it because he's like, I don't, want, I don't want to pass out here. You know, I, I don't know what's going to happen to me. So, um, the right. guy... Wake up, take to a chair. Yeah. yeah. You used to fuck with me, huh? And then... How was Ro your drink? Roscoe comes to save the day. Come on, one! What? <laughs> no, but... Yeah, he he's like, no, I'm not fucking doing it. And he he tried like shoving him and shit. And he's they they broke up the way. He's trying to run out of there. The guy throws a bottle at his head and misses him by like an inch. And then him and White Boy run out of there while Omar is getting his dick sucked. And somehow crawled out of there and crawled home <laughs> while they're trying to save Omar. So they're like circling the the lot trying to get Omar out of there. Then they run away and they get their windows shot out by the gang. And they're and they like they get like drive up a curb and and then the car gets beat with uh, baseball bats, and then they get out of there. They're like Omar, you're fucking home. Like what are you talking about? You fucking, we're trying to get you out of there, and this is what happens to us. What the fuck is wrong with you? Holy shit! So he's like, yeah, that drew the line. I'm like, I don't want a part of that, and I'm like, I kind of remember that story, but I don't remember the guns. You know, are, are you bullshit me? He's like, dude, Phil, are you fucking kidding me? You don't remember. And I remember this now. We were in White Boy's backyard having a campfire like you would whatever, anywhere. And somebody shot a gun in the air and we had to hide behind the swimming pool because he was pointing it at us. Oh. And we had to run. So, the good old ghetto days, you know. But I'm like, yeah, man, that's... I guess I'm gay for not doing that shit, but I'm, I'm good. I'm getting a lot of dick, not getting shot. I can tell you <laughs> I've never been shot at. Yeah. I, no, I mean, I don't think we, I don't think I was shot at, or at least I'm glad I don't remember. <laughs> but well, you know what I do remember, though? I think right after that, this is really funny because I was pretty high, and so I was kind of laughing the whole time. I remember laughing, being on the crowd, being on the boat, I'm like, this is kind of cool, man. I usually hang out with the punk crowd, but I guess, I guess now I can tell my ghetto stories. <laughs> my white ass. <laughs> yeah. So, Street cred. So yeah. we 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 are. Uh, I'm glad the, I don't have any of those. Stories, <laughs> I'm I'm okay with uh with with who I am. Yeah, without, yeah. Without that, I'm such a fucking idiot for even like being around. But and, anyways, <laughs> it does make a it does make a fun story. Yeah, yeah. Be, be, tell the tale. Be, be, because uh, so so I think white boy or somebody called the cops or the cops just came by to question people, and the way they question is they just cuffed all of us and slammed us against the car. I was high as fuck, and I just got a Subway sandwich. So I'm like, dude, I want to I wanna fucking eat this right now. He's like, no, you're going to... I'm like, well, where am I supposed to put this? Because they literally, like, all right, step on the driveway. And I thought they're just going to explain the story while I'm high and munching on my sandwich. <laughs> and they're like, no, no, get behind the car, and we're going to search you. And I'm like, all right. So I placed the sandwich on the cop car while they cuffed me. And they're kind of like, yeah, this, this fucking white kid, this fucking punk-ass kid... He's not harmed, so they don't question me. They go over to them to question. And I'm, like, trying to eat my sandwich sideways off the car. <laughs> I'm like, get the fuck out of here, you know, while I'm cuffed. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So that, I, I, I'm, you know, it just takes a spark to remember these great stories, these near-death experiences for him. <laughs> so you and Carlos had a lot of fun reminiscing about, like, getting shot yeah. at, being cuffed. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, that's... That's going on. I I don't think I want to mention anything else because, yeah. I do. You, do you remember uh, Otis at all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, see, see, this is the kind of dumb shit I would do with with them. We um, well, uh, Otis was like, Otis was a cool ass fucking guy. He just he he played in punk bands. He was, um, uh, hardcore punk. 
He was friend. just this like tall ass, yeah. uh, six foot, really thin black guy with like an Angela Davis afro. Well, he's like half black, half Native American, no? Yeah, yeah. And um, I remember we well, were he's getting screwed on both ends of the stick then. Uh, but yeah. goddamn it, was she pretty? Mm. Yeah. So I mean, we um. We were driving in Carlos's car, and they're like, you know, what's up, guys? What's new? I never really, I, I, that was, I think that was one, like the second or third time I met him, and we picked him up in Carlos's car, and we're in his neighborhood, which is kind of another different King area, but they're kind of, they're cool, dude. Most, from what I've learned, maybe I'm wrong. Most Mexican gangs aren't hostile towards anyone other than gangs because it's, it was they were kind of built on like racism. To sort of like well, a protect. lot of the a lot of like the initial gang culture that popped up in like the sixties, seventies was was based around protecting communities from the police. Yeah, and like like especially like a, of yeah like of people of color and different like nationality yeah. and shit because because the police would just go in there and fucking like beat and kill people. Yeah, like they like like they still do. Yeah, but so so you got to start the scooter gang. You know, yeah, that's so, right. Yeah, that's it. Uh, the we scooter need gang is there. Is there for the people? We're gonna ne refuse to not eat our subway sandwiches. You know? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's right. Just gnaw, gnaw on them, cuffed in the back of a car. That's the, that's I, I would the love to. I, I hope that there's some dash cam footage of that. <laughs> <somewhere>. <laughs> <laughs> um, Dude, that kid's teeth are so fucking ugly. <laughs> like, <laughs> no. God, meatball marinara. That's so messy. <laughs> oh, Five dollar foot long. Good choice. I should have confiscated that shit for weed and had it for myself. <laughs> there, that would have that would have made a great five dollar foot long commercial. Right, you know, right. <laughs> so good you can't quit. Especially since that guy's like a pedophile, right? Yeah, he, oh, yeah. yeah, oh yeah, so like yeah. after he got arrested, still right. eating the subway. That's <laughs> no, but um, yeah, so you think they oh, give, you think they give him subway sandwiches in prison? Did he get special treatment? May, uh, maybe on subway day. For is, is, is there subway day, day in no. prison? <laughs> No, all, all the inmates look forward to it. Guys, it's going to be a good day. Subway day. Right. Uh, a friend of mine who was incarcerated briefly um, in southern Illinois said that there was one day a week when they would get fast food cheeseburgers, and it was his favorite day. Hmm. Yeah, so there you go. I, when I read about that mob guy, Frank Calabrese, and went on his tour about where he killed people in Chicago, hmm. uh, he, uh, hmm. he told us, because he's in the mob, they, they used to always bring over... All, like like fucking straight up Lou Malnati's pizza and shit like that like a, but they had to share it with the guards. Yeah. But uh, but <laughs> any anyways, so I'm I'm, I'm, I'm driving the guards guy, you know. Fuck them. Yeah, how many yeah. cigarettes does a deep dish cost? Right. So so Too many. So, Otis. Yeah, but, so me, Carlos and Otis were in Carlos's little fucking Geo Metro. You know that, that's like the Yeah. Like a, yeah. Any, anyways, we're driving down the street and there's like a there's like a gang party outside, got like just barbecuing on his front lawn, and we're just driving by, and I didn't see it yet because I was in the back seat, and o Otis is in front, and, I'm, and he's like, so what's new with you guys? I'm like, oh, not much, man. I'm working, and I used to do this because I was an asshole. I had horrible fucking road rage, so I'm like, hey, dude, look what I got. I used to get a hunting slingshot and like a shitload of like dollar store marbles, Oh and God, Phil! <laughs> so somebody like just shoot, shoot that fucking motherfucker, you know? Like shoot his window out or something. So we drive by this fucking gang party. There's like a low rider, and he and he's like, "Oh, let's test it out right away." And he shoots the fucking, he breaks his fucking glass. Oh. I don't know how the fuck we got out of there. I'm like, yeah, I don't like, I don't want to hang out with Otis anymore. No. He seems like a troublemaker. That didn't seem like a smart decision. I think that's when you give a slingshot to a Native American man. That's no, that's too far. A little racist. Yeah, I'm sorry. Don't apologize. But it was to beautiful. Us. But it was beautiful when he he looked beautiful when he did. That he. Anyway, so yeah. So, anyway. <laughs> so, so, so that what's was, new, guys? What's yeah. What, uh, what's next on the agenda here? I know we were talking about the uh, Cockney accent earlier. Yeah. Right? And about how. Uh, the sou the the southern accent get gets a bad rep for being uh, the the accent of ignorance, mm -hmm. and that people think that people who speak with the southern accent are stupid. But I think the stupidest, most stupid. <laughs> I guess, Keep going. You're, you're doing yeah, great. 
This is good. Uh, <laughs> apparently, it's me. It's whatever my accent is. Uh, but um, you sound so is, northern. Is the is the Cockney accent the you know the the English mm. accent it just sounds everything sounds very slurred together like it's all one word just elongated by one very drunk. Get out your knickers, you fucking cunt, and go to the pub. Yeah, that's a, that's about it. And are they are are those who speak uh, in like the Cockney accent? Is that the South of? Uh, of is that their South? Like their sure. Southern accent? I I don't know, but I mean, isn't it all relative? Like Boston, like that real thick Boston accent comes from like the Southies who live in the southern part of Boston. Also, uh, not disparaging anyone with a Boston accent. Also a stupid accent. Yeah, that's the least disparaging thing. <laughs> I because I just want to quickly remind uh, everyone that the Cockney accent does not sound nearly as refined nor as elegant as the Irish accent. Um, no, the Irish accent's fine. It's beautiful. It is music to my ears. It I, I kind of started to like all accents. I don't know. It just it brings more culture, I feel like. To it, dude. Yeah. I I met an Irish girl a while back, and I gotta tell you that that accent. And I, I like a girl with a Scottish accent. There you go. When I hear men speak with a Scottish accent, it's a, I don't understand a word they say, but, but I don't I don't know what the different what, what the difference really is. But I I feel like uh, the female <laughs> Scottish uh, speakers enunciate a little bit better. The difference is you don't care what the female Scotch have to say. <laughs> That's, That's not, that is not true <laughs> no. most of the time. It doesn't matter what's coming out of your mouth, it's what's going in. Oh. That's, oh, classic oh, Phil. There we go. <laughs> there you go. All Felicio Phil over here. <laughs> <laughs> Do you still use that name at the clubs? Do I what? Still use that Felicio, Felicio Phil. I think that's a I, I'm I'm close. Close. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to change, because sure. I think I have. It used to be Filthy Phil. Oh, that's good too. <laughs> and then, and then, kind of, you know, that whole gay. It was Fildo, mm. um, uh, and then, yeah, I'm not sure what it is. I I, I switched to fill up with two L's. No, Ooh. just to fuck with people a little bit. One P though. Well, there are two oh. P's in Philip. Well, I, that that just uh, that might be the new change. And a third, just one, uh, yeah, in front third. and in back. Yeah, it's uh, it's a four all together. Yeah. <laughs> Philip. <laughs> or would it, Philip. Yeah, I was going to say, would it be Philip? With the silent one in the middle. And we can't wait to get Roscoe on the show to pronounce that. Uh, <laughs> I would have loved to have had him, have him on. Dude, speaking of Roscoe, I got to tell this. Because I, I told Bill, but I, Zach, you got it. So, and, and speaking of, it reminded me too when you said how your fucking car was like rumbling. Your, oh, your yeah. Pickup. Dude, it would shake. I, I uh, have an announcement. I have a new car. Um, oh. You saw my blue Volkswagen. Yes, yes. So I, I used to have a Golf Volkswagen 2005, pretty much a Mr. Bean car. Kind of, well, I guess kind of. But anyways, dude, that fucking car. So here's what happened. Um, do you know what an engine mount is? Yes. I, oh, of course I, he does. I, I didn't know. What an I didn't engine, know either. I, I, I thought it was something to do with the frame of the car. No. Nope. So engine mount, I guess, is like two bolts that keep the engine steady in the frame. Mm -hmm. A year ago, the same mechanic that helped me get out of a hit and run. <laughs> hey, all right. Go back to our legal discussion. He, yeah. he, um, he uh, alleged. An alleged. alleged. <laughs> it didn't happen. Right. I'm spicing it up. No, it was um, a nothing and run. Uh, he told me, he's like, you really need to get a fucking engine mount fixed like one of them's cracked you need to get this fixed in i'm like ah it's an it's a little problem engine light isn't going on yeah but your engine light is yeah but your engine, engine can fall out of place well, well i yeah i didn't i didn't know what an engine i thought it was the frame like <laughs> I thought, how did you think that was better <laughs> just like I thought the frame's thing. cracked it's yeah. fine well so so um so yeah i got it to the point where i'm on the highway and my car the engine is sliding left to right because both mounts are broken. Oh. It's like and I didn't realize it, so I'm going fucking like eighty, and then I tried to switch lanes, but I had to push my engine to the left, with my wheel in order to switch to the right. You get what I'm oh, saying? Oh God! It was fucking terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> Not to mention, um, it happened to me before, so that kind of didn't freak me out, and that's classical Phil. 
it was louder than two Harley Davidsons. It used to be louder than two Harley Davidsons. I'm like, ah, that's just that's just my car. Cars will be cars. I, I, dude, I'm not kidding. You had to keep the windows closed to not go deaf and to not suffocate because the exhaust was so bad. Because because the engine was sliding around. You know when you bend a paper clip? That's kind of what happened to my exhaust pipe. It's just kind of oh, bent, cracked, and fell off. So, <laughs> best part is, this is the same fucking day. Me and Roscoe made a deal that if I go to a metal show with him, of his choice, he has to go to see Every Time I Die with me. He doesn't like them because I, I think they're hardcore noise metal. He thinks they're emo core. And I fucking love Every Time I Die. So it come, it happens the day of the show. I'm like, motherfucker. Because I had to pick him up, and the show was five minutes away from me in the Burbs. It was at Dirty Nelly's. Okay. So, um, <laughs> of course, you know, because Rascal lives in a fucking mansion, that piece of shit. He's like, yeah, you're going to take me in this call. It's fucking making me go deaf. It sounds loud as fuck. What the, are we going to make it there, Phil? Are you sure? <laughs> like, And we're driving there, dude, like... It is, I, I, and what sucks is the faster you go, the louder it is. Like every, I'm, I'm going like 90 to my house with Ross, trying to not get pulled over because it's loud as fuck. Yeah. We finally make it there. And, um, anyways, to end off with the car, I went to the mechanic the next day after the show. Dude, when I went to my mechanic, dude, he, he literally popped the hood. He did not want to raise the car and go underneath it. Because, because your engine was going to fall out. Yeah, yeah, dude, he he goes, push <laughs> oh it with your... God, he, he goes, just touch it. And I pushed it with one finger, and it's like... And it moved, yeah. Like, he, yeah, he didn't want to say, oh my God, dude. And so, yeah, I ended up selling it to them, because they take care of... They take care of everything. They take care of hit and, not hit and runs, you know. No, they... <laughs> they, they they give it to the junkers and everything, so I, I sold it to them. and um, yeah. But anyways, I go to this show with Roscoe, and dude, that is the best therapy for me because I've been listening to that band since fucking eighth grade. They have the craziest like s switches with riffs, and it's it's hard to follow the guitar, but they played all their old shit because the last time I saw them, they played all their new so I was fucking losing it. Here's what happens. You know what, you ever, I mean, you've gone to metal shows, Zach, right? A few. Not a lot. But... Have, have you ever seen, there's always that one fucking piece of shit, smells like swamp ass, doesn't know the music, he's just there to beat people up. Sure. He's oh. been to a concert with me, so he knows. Yeah. I was going to say, the piece of shit who doesn't know the music at a metal show is definitely me. Oh. Okay. <laughs> but, well, but, well, but I don't smell like swamp ass, I don't. Do I smell like swamp ass? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. I'm also fighting no a cold, cold, though, to be fair. Oh. I'm not done with Good. the low job, Good. so. <laughs> no. Wait, wait till afterwards. I get a little slobbery. Uh, but, oh lord! <laughs> but uh, but the, yeah, there was this guy like a foot taller than me. Looked, I I don't even know how to describe it. He he looked like he was from medieval, the medieval era because he's just sweaty. His hair is like parted, and and he he's like uh, greased bag. Yeah, just. And and he, dude, I go into a retard rage when people slam my head. What kind of rage? Uh, mentally challenged rage, because he fucking when they sl he was slamming my head into random people's heads, literally just slamming my per perfectly because I had you know I epilepsy and so many head injuries. Yeah. I just like, dude, what the fuck? So I try and charge at him with my elbow, like from one side of the pit to the other. Try and knock him down. I ended up knocking down a little, like, four-foot-tall girl. Oh. And then I'm like, all right, round two. <laughs> I do it again. Ready, fart. <laughs> I, I get him right in the throat. And he picks me up with one hand by my throat, WWF style, and starts punching me in the face as hard as he can. So I start swinging at him. And then his two friends come in and start punching me in the face. I'm like, all right. Time to fight yeah. dirty. Yeah. Yeah. No, help the guy that's got the dude lifted with one hand. Yeah. He's the one that <laughs> he needs, needs the help. Yeah, he really needs it. Right? So I, I'm like, I, yeah, I got to fight dirty because I'm getting my ass kicked here. Like, any, anyways, so I, you, you know how you do that signal of the wolf pack? Yeah. Like, do you know, Bill? How you do, like, it's, mm -hmm. it, it's like, the, like, like that, but you put your uh, two middle fingers up and you... Like, Wait, my you, two minutes. like you go like that, and then you can like touch the thumb there, like that. Oh, quiet coyote. Yeah, yeah. So or llama. I do that. Or llama. 
shove my thumb and my fingers in his throat, and then try and gouge his eyes with the other two fingers. Jesus Christ. <laughs> like, like, innovative, <laughs> but, yeah. but brutal. Well, well, first... I'd love live music. Let me just say, I love going to shows. Right? So, it, it is, it's a great, very cathartic experience it's, going to going to see live bands. Well, well, well I, so I, I, I elbow his friends in the face because I'm getting choked, and then I try to do that to him, and he's, he's just fucking choking, and dude, he fucking bit my nail off and like bit into my knuckle it took like a week to heal <laughs> I, I might have caught some from him because i did kind of have like half strep throat <laughs> but <laughs> oh and a taste for human blood but 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 the funny thing was um you, you know like pu pu punk shows people are fucking cool as hell everybody picks each other up like so i um you know everybody broke us apart and everything and i'm like all right i'm gonna give like two songs give it a rest and I, then he's dead. I, I, no, <laughs> I, I tried going at him again. <laughs> no, no. Well, I, I was playing on running up his back and crowd surfing, kind of like I did at Wu Tang in Riot Fest when that fat guy was hitting me. No, but um, uh, I, I, I just go up to him like, "Hey, man, sorry, dude. Like, can you can you help me crowd surf? It's the last song. I kind of want to jump on stage." And he's like, I, "I'm like, what? I'm like, yeah, dude. I'm sorry. Like, we're cool, right?" I put my hand around him and. <laughs> He's so fucking drunk. His eyes are like twitching from the eye gouging. <laughs> He's like, "What? The, do I know you?" <laughs> so yeah, it was a great ending to a show. You know? So he helped you up. Yeah, he helped me up, and and oh yeah, and then I get in the car. I go. I, I left um kind of early to um so I can pull the car around right. and get the fuck out of there with my loud ass car. Wait, where was Roscoe? He would have been great backup. I, exactly, Ross, because it was going. Dude, those. That's why it's the best therapy because. I'm not the only one who goes nuts to these songs. The whole fucking show is going... Like, people are jumping off stage the whole fucking time. People are... Chris Eastwood was there, the still hoping to show up that he's going to be our guest, the, the hardcore singer. Mm -hmm. The mysterious yeah. Chris Eastwood. <laughs> but he, um, um, yeah, everybody's doing, like, the whole ninja kick shit, uh, you know, grindcore dance. But anyways, I, I get in the car. I'm like, where the fuck is Ross? I text him. I'm like, we got to get out of here because my car is loud as fuck. This is in the suburbs. I'm definitely getting pulled over. And he gets in the car. He's like, really worried. He's like, dude, that, um, I, I changed my mind about that band. That, that, was, that, was, that was beautiful. That was beautiful. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, dude, I'm, I feel so much better, man. Like, my car was breaking down. And, like, I'm going to get rid of it tomorrow and all that shit. And he's like, yeah, man, dude, it was, it was beautiful. I'm like, dude, it, it was a good show. I, I don't know why. Are you crying? It's like... Dude, shut the fuck up, man. You should be proud of me. I'm like, what? Like, what are you talking about? He's like, uh, do you not see these vampire bites on me? There are, like, two chicks making out with him the whole fucking show on the balcony. So, and he's like, are you I'm like, uh, no, you piece of shit, I'm not. Why didn't you go fucking home with them? And fuck them and get to the next city. He's like, Phil, come on, just say you're proud of me. So, yeah, and that was the whole conversation back. I'm like, dude... I don't know, that, that's, you know, I, I His cannot, excuse was... I can be empathetic towards that. That is, that is definitely, like, my MO to, to be like, I don't know if they want me, you know, I don't know if they want me to, to go home with them. Yeah. Like, well, like they, explicitly, even, like, to be like, hey, why don't you come home with us? I don't know if that's what, <laughs> what they actually want. It never hurts to ask, though. Yeah. Fortune favors the bold. I, obviously, I was just busting his balls. I love Roscoe. He's one of my best friends. But, um... He, uh, his excuse for not going was, Jewel needs me tomorrow, so, and... Well, you should have told, you should have asked him if one of those girls' names was Jewel. Ooh. Right? I should have. I, and that, that, that may have got him really upset, though, because he'd be like, fuck it, I lost my chance, like, but I don't know. So, so it was a great, a great fucking show, though. Sounds like it. Mm-hmm. And now we're going to power trip and we're gonna air guitar while he makes out with some hardcore guy yeah. in the back nice. <laughs> it might be me <laughs> <laughs> as if you were so lucky right. I don't know if Ross has ever gotten a blowjob before but he's about to yep filthy Phil in the house fellatio Phil yeah, hey, that yeah, yeah. I'm oh, not filthy Phil wait Philbo? I'm not Philbo either alright I'm not filled them because I put a condom in my mouth when I do it now. I'm I'm clean this time. But Phil, I miss dirty Phil. I miss filthy Phil. Um, 
Speaking of strep throat. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. <laughs> no, speaking of yeah. this is fucking no I have to mention this. I, I know I'm I know I'm like talking profusively, no, but you're good. Dude, I cannot fucking believe this. This blew my fucking mind. How I've seen enough videos, enough podcasts bitching about healthcare, about pharmaceuticals and how corrupt it is. I cannot believe this. I have researched this. My buddy the gun nut went to school to be a nurse. So he knows this, and he proved it to me. Dude, I cannot he, fucking... This guy gets more interesting every time he mentions it. Right? He's got many layers, yeah. I gotta wonder if he surgically knows how to do things. What's What are hunting trips going to be like when he stuffs me? <laughs> <laughs> no, but he's, got the, he's got the suture experience. Right, right? But I'm the guy who's shooting up the place. What the fuck? No, but, yeah. The system's uh, broke. But... No, but so, um... So I, because I've been having stomach problems and throat problems, you know, I've been t telling you guys how, like, my breathing was messed up. I thought I had strep throat. I'm like, yeah. every single fucking symptom I'm having, my throat's hurting, I'm feeling nauseous, my, my stomach's hurting, I, I feel like hurling but qu kind of quite can't. I hated it because, re I, you know, I had to go... I have a shitload of medical bills. I had to go get my MRI. I had to go get my EEG. Mm -hmm. Now I now I switch my health insurance, so I have to have a new primary care person. So I just am seeing too many doctor visits. I didn't want to go see a doctor for strep throat. Sure. I ended up. I mean, I ended Wait, up going. I, I ended up going to uh, uh, immediate care for my stomach yeah. because I didn't know it got worse. But I looked up strep throat, and I knew that strep throat. Every time, what do you guys get for strep throat? Amoxicillin. Um, do you guys, you guys know what that is, right? Yeah. Well, I didn't know this because, so the gun nut is also, uh, nut, nuts about, you know, the three percenter survivalist. Sure. And he's a licensed pharmacist. Yeah. So he told me, have you heard of fish mox? Fish mox forte. Fish mox mm -hmm. forte mm -hmm. is amoxicillin made for fish with strep throat, which I don't even know how the fuck that works. Fish get strep throat? Yeah, I, I didn't know that. Why do they? Oh, right. Why do they have this? Or how is this what we're studying? Right. Why? Why, why do? How do like fish? Like your goldfish could live an extra six days with this medication. Yeah. Oh, thank you, doctor. How, how? I didn't. How are fish that fucking picky too? You know, like oh, I, these are the symptoms I'm getting. You know, like yeah. How do you check? Like how do you know? What are I, the symptoms of I, fish strep throat? Like, I, I think like, like their shit is a What does it look like when a fish coughs? Yeah, how do they breathe? It's through their gills, right? Yeah, so right? is their throat everywhere? I, I would, or is or at least in their gills. I mean, it can't be in the mouth, right? Or maybe throat is more maybe like the Maybe the prescription thing. slip prints out of their gill when they get it. And it just floats up to the top. Maybe, yeah. yeah. Or you can run like a diagnostic like they do with cars now, like just put in like a piece of paper. It's like, oh yeah. There's well, I thought, in this I thought you meant like plugging plugging one of those uh, links into the engine. Just <laughs> yeah, like plugging into the to the cloaca and uh, the check engine light of the fish is on. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. That's why it's been glowing yellow. Yeah. So fish mux forte. So fi yeah. Um, so I look this shit. He goes, dude, because I'm a survivalist and whatever three percenter. I have that stash in my bunker. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? You have a bunker. He has a bunker. He he doesn't have he has a jerry rig bunker because <laughs> he lives in the Chicago so you kind of can't have a bunker. He has, yeah, he has a locker at work. I think he kind of really? dug his own hole, kind of like frailty. <laughs> oh god! <laughs> no, but um, he 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 told me, dude, fish mox is one hundred percent the exact same thing as human amoxicillin, but it costs less. It costs it costs like twenty bucks. When you go to get amoxicillin, it's like 80 bucks unless you have health insurance and it covers yeah. it and you meet your dog. It is the exact same thing. And I said, that's complete bullshit. You're fucking with me. You know, like, there's no way that's true. There's a pill code on every code, kind of like uh, we have, you know, epilepsy pills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The code on human amoxicillin is the exact same code on the fish mox. <laughs> really? Yeah. So it is the exact same thing. It is the exact The only difference is that... Fish mox is not tested by the FDA. So, I don't know. Neither the, is homeopathic medicine, so. Yeah. And that works. I, I just, I don't know. I, that kind of, I, I couldn't believe that. You know, that's that's really fucked up, I think, that you're getting charged. 
I mean, the, hey, the, don't don't broadcast this too loud because that, uh, that's how I'm getting all of my amoxicillin from now on. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's gonna it's gonna stash the well, fish pills. So do you have to get a fish and then take it to a vet and say like, yeah, yeah it's got like, strep. I need that script. Yeah. Is it they're like restrictions Give me the good on shit. it? Is it or can you just go to PetSmart and buy like a like a twenty ounce a pill bottle of fish mox forte? Actually, is there a black market for I, it? There is. I, I found out about it because they don't sell it at PetSmart anymore, and they don't sell it at fish stores as many anymore because so many people found out about this. When you go on, when you Google this shit, so many people are buying that shit because it's fucking cheaper. So um, because our American medical system is broken. Yeah, and 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 you have to buy, go on a special like. I think I went on like heartvetland.com or something. It's like specifically for oh, the dark web. Yeah. There we go. Fish Heartland. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the dark web of, of fish narcotics. Yeah. I read so, about that. I yeah. don't know. Fish opioids. I'm sure there's a joke there. Uh, probably. And I think we'll find a joke for it. After we return from our brief little break here. Oxyclownfish. Yes. All right, sorry. Yeah, no. <laughs> After the break, yeah, I don't know, we covered a lot of ground, like fellatio fish, right. uh, the law, the NBA, power trip. Uh, we've grown a lot. We've expanded a lot. And I hope our viewers out there feel the now same. Now it's time for my throat to expand a lot. That's <laughs> right. All right. You, me, the bathroom now. All right. Turn the camera off. <laughs> Oh my god, do I need to pee? <laughs> yeah, that, was, that, that wasn't too rushed, was it? Es nest nam heitens, dies,